Welcome my dear students The Lebanon Top by Ted Hughes This is the second poetry of your book and today I am going to present before you the first part of it about the author Edward James Hughes was an English poet translator and children's writer critics frequently rank him as one of the best poets of his generation and one of the 20th century's greatest writers he was appointed poet laureate in 1984 and held the office until his death Ted Hughes A special contribution to English poetry lies in the creation of a poetic world with a central interest in wild animals and birds. His poetic inspiration is born out of and focused on the peculiar but intimate influence that animals of forest, trees and the sky have on a sensitive human spirit. Ted Hughes Poet Ted Hughes was a British poet. He was born on 17th August 1930 in Yorkshire in England. According to the critics, he is the best poet of his generation and one of the greatest writers of the 20th century. He was married to American poet Sylvia Plath from 1956 until 1963. His last poetic work, Birthday Letters, that was published in 1998 dealt with their relationship his first collection the hawk in the rain published in 1957 was highly acclaimed however probably crow published in 1970 was his most significant work uses early poetic works dealt with nature and savagery of animals he served as a poet laureate of the United Kingdom from 1956 until his death in 1998 so dear friends we are at the recitation session so here we go with the poem the lavanum top by ted hughes the lavanum top is silent quite still in the afternoon yellow september sunlight a few leaves yellowy all it seems fallen Goldfinch comes with a twitching chirrup, a suddenness, a startlement at a branch end. Then, sleek as a lizard and alert and abrupt, she enters the thickness, and a machine starts up of chittering and a tremor of wings and trills. The whole tree trembles and trills. It is the engine of a family. She stokes it full, then floats out to a branch end. showing her broad face identity mask then with every delicate whisper chirp of whisperings she launches away towards the infinite and the labanum subsides to empty the rejuvenation of nature and the celebration of energy the labanum tree is silent until the goldfinch comes and enlivens the tree with its activities there are all sorts of sound and startlements Soon she shoots away into the sky plunging the tree into surging silence written in free verse free verse means it is free from any limitations of rhyme or regular meter all right so it is written in free verse style now be silent quiet and still it is september afternoon full of sunlight it is autumn season the lavender tree is full of yellow leaves All the seeds of the Lebanon tree have fallen. Soon, a goldfinch comes. It starts twitching, that means moving and chirping. Chirping means screeching of the bird's sound. All on a sudden, there is a movement at the end of the branch. Just like a lizard, smooth, alert and abrupt, she, she means the mother bird, mother goldfinch, enters the thick part, that is the foliage, that is the foliage.
foliage of the tree. A machine of chattering, shaking and wobbling starts up on the tree top. The whole tree starts shaking. The nest is the machine and the goldfinch is the engine of a family. She feeds the nestlings as if she adds fuel to the machine, then moves out to the end of a branch showing her striped stipend's barred face. Then, with a strange, soft, chirping whistle, she flies away towards the sky. The laburnum tree once again becomes silent. Now this is the time. Now this is the time to explain you the whole poem. But in this part, I will explain only five lines. But before starting, let me tell you what is laburnum. It's a tree, golden chain tree, and its flowers are golden, yellowish. It is called as Cassia fistula in scientific name. In Hindi, we call it Amaltash, and in Kerala, it is Kani Konna. The quality of this poem is it is a free verse, so there is no particular rhyme or meter. There is no limitation. The first line, the laburnum top, is silent. That means there is a complete silence, and the tree top is still. So because here we are comparing. a tree with a quality like a man to be still to be quiet so it is personification in the afternoon yellow september sunlight so september sunlight repetition of s sound it is alliteration sibilance and the poet here is trying to say that is his afternoon time in september month a few leaves are changing its color it's pale it's yellowing and the seeds are already fallen till the gold finch you can see the picture of a bird in the corner that is called gold finch so till the gold finch comes and it starts making a twitching chirrup sound chirrup is a sound so whenever we use any word which is telling about a sound that is onomatopoeia so twitching here is a movement movement of the tail or the body parts of the goldfinch and the sound made by the bird is chirruping and then a suddenness a startlement at the branch end then then something happens at the end of the branches something surprising something full of amazement all of a sudden so the tree which was earlier completely silent that has now come into an action rest of the lines will explain in the next part of this chapter this video thank you for watching this video we will meet in the next part of this video thank you very much